We're now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of the Hedgesville Eagles, Matt Faircloth. Coach Faircloth, your team took on Musselman on Saturday morning, unfortunately fell 6 nothing. Let's just recap the game and get your takeaways from it. I mean, our kids played hard. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about it all year, to you know, be able to get off the bus and go execute game plan. And, you know, they did that. Uh, you know, even though we're pretty beat up, guys that we needed to step up in situations and positions did. And, you know, I couldn't be, you know, happier with a bunch of guys that, you know, down four or five guys that normally play for us. And, and we went out and competed. And that, that's the biggest thing for me going forward is, making sure we're able to get off the bus, execute a game plan, and, and compete. Coach, I know you were frustrated with how the game ended. Um, do you, After looking back on it, do you still think that was an illegal kick by Musselman? <laughs> uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not going to take anything away from the Musselman kids. They competed hard. They played hard. Um, yeah, you just don't want to see it in like that. How tough has it been so far this year trying to find guys, as you mentioned, a lot of guys beat up, injured this year to truly step up and try to fill those roles? No, I mean, for us, it, I mean, it's a good thing because a lot of our younger guys are getting that experience now. Uh, so that next year when these guys that are seniors graduate, we should have guys ready to fill fill spot. Uh, I mean, those guys – that you know, we were put, we threw into a big situation on Saturday morning because we knew that was a that was a playoff game, and uh, you know to go zero zero until there's three seconds left in the game shows us how far we've come with these young guys actually being able to step in and fill in roles. Has anyone uh, surprised you from how quickly maybe they've stepped up uh, compared to maybe what you had thought before the season? No, I mean, you know, the first one that comes to mind is Jacob Kerr. Uh, Jacob plays, you know, a hybrid safety. He played inside backer for us this past week because we're down, you know, three linebackers. Uh, you know, he's been the first one to really, you know, jump out at you. And, I mean, you know, Nate No, I mean, Nate no has been our best corner all year. Uh, you know, with X not playing uh, football this year to focus on basketball, that was a key spot for us. And, uh, I mean, Nate No's really jumped into that. And, uh, and Gavin Young. I mean, everybody sees Gavin as a pass pass catcher and a and a skilled guy on the offensive side. I'm gonna tell you, Gavin might have played his best high school football game at corner on Saturday. So for us, it's just you know getting guys to step in roles that we need. Back looking at this last game, as we said, it was a touchdown for them on the final play of the game. But on the other side, your defense uh, pitches a shutout. Just talk about their performance and what you liked on the defensive end. They stuck to the game plan. Uh, you know, uh, I think they might have had one play, one pass play over 10, and I think they have one run play over 10. And, you know, for us, it's, you know, sticking to the game plan, and that's been a big thing all year is with new guys going in, not trusting the process because they haven't been thrown into that that fire yet. I think Saturday really showed, you know, how far we've come. I mean, that defense, uh, I mean, I don't know the last time we didn't give up an offensive touchdown to Musselman, but, I mean, it was a knockdown drag out, and, the guys actually went out and executed the game plan the way it should, and, and at the end of the day, I can't be more happier with our defense. Coach, we've talked about it before, but Aiden Fleming is having an incredible season for your program. Uh, according to the Journal, he ranks number two nationally in, in reported tackles um, in the country. Uh, just what has he brought to your team, and I guess also – uh, what would be your pitch for why Aiden should get more recognition on a national scene? Well, I'm going to tell you, I mean, there, there's not anything the kid can't do. Uh, I mean, right now he's probably our third or fourth leading receiver. Uh, he's probably in the top two or three on our team in rushing, and nobody's ever seen that before coming out of Aiden because he's never get, been given the opportunity. Um, but defensively, I mean, if you watch any of our films, that guy flies around. He's got a motor like I've never seen. Uh, he's a competitor. He makes everybody around him better. Uh, you know, he pushes everybody at practice. And, you know, when, when guys are messing up on the field, he holds them accountable. And I think that's starting to spread throughout our team as everybody's starting to hold each other accountable to things. And, you know, losing, losing him uh, going into next year, that like I, I don't know if that's replaceable um, because that guy has meant so much to us, not only – on the field, but off the field. And I can't speak highly enough about him. And You know, I, I've talked to college coaches all the time about him, and 
if you want a game changer, he's the guy. Coach, this week, your guys' is bye week, what's the approach that you and your staff are taking for your team? Uh, one, rest, get healthy, but still sticking to football stuff and, uh, you know, lightening the load a little bit and just working on the basics, fundamental stuff and stretch, recovery stuff, uh, getting our bodies back into, you know, try to get them back into some peak performance before we hit the field next week. And, you know, it's just working on the fundamentals. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for us is, you know, I thought we executed really well uh, at times on the offensive end on Saturday. We just had three big turnovers that, you know, at the end of the day cost us the game, and we got to finish that stuff. We've talked about how it's been a, a tough season with the injuries, and, and this isn't the season that you guys expected. Um, but you're not completely eliminated from the postseason yet, but also, you know, it will be obviously very tough. You're playing two of the top teams in the state in the final two games. Uh, what's the morale of the team right now, and, and how do you try to keep the kids focused on, uh, you know, finishing out the season strong? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I was more worried about going into Saturday's game just for the simple fact of, you know, for us, I mean, everything's been an away game. So for us, we don't get that opportunity when school's out, you know, for our kids to hang around and relax until game time. It's for us, it's as soon as the bell rings, get them fed, get them fitted, get them on the bus, and, and let's roll. And so for us, that was that's, that was my biggest thing. And, you know, for us, we're still competing. Guys are still showing up to practice competing and you know, that's the one thing I always say about Hedgesville kids. You know, when, even when the, the the cards are stacked against you, at the end of the day, they're going to keep competing and keep showing up and grinding. I mean, that's what that's what Hedgesville's been built on for for many years. And then, Coach, our uh, fun question this week um, is: What kind of music do you like to listen to? Well, I mean, out, out here, you know, everybody says, "Oh man, it's country," but hey, I'm I'm in it all. I'm in country. I'm I'm in the, I'm in hip hop. I'm in it all. It's come out the practice here, here at all uh, on the playlist. But for me, I listen to anything and everything as long as it don't have too many bad words in it. All right, Coach Faircloth, appreciate the time and take care. All right, I appreciate it, fellas. Thank you.